Got a surprise visit from uh, Mr. Greg Ross, the one and only. Greg, man, thank you very much, dude. So, really is an honor, man. I got to meet you up here at Space City Tattoo Convention. And uh, thank you for coming by, dude. Yeah, it truly was a surprise, man. So, we're going to jump right into this, Greg. Thank you again for taking the time to do this. Um, uh, how long have you been tattooing, Greg? I've been tattooing about 14 years. 14 years. And uh, where, what's the name of your tattoo shop? Uh, Blue Rose Tattoo. We're in, in Huntsville. In Huntsville, Alabama, right? We'll put all the links and stuff for that yeah. at the end of this. And all right. Um, Greg, before you got into tattooing, what were your thoughts about tattooing? Um, I always liked tattoos. Um, I always thought they were super cool. Um, I was in a bunch of bands before I tattooed. And mm -hmm. like, I don't know, you'd always see people with sleeves or, you know, you, it was everywhere you looked. Um, so I, just, I always thought they were super cool. Um, always wanted to get them. Always kind of thought about doing them, but it was way harder to get into back then. Right. Like I, that's not that long ago, but it was way harder then than it is now. It seems like so I, I didn't even think it was something I could do. I guess. Gotcha. All right. Um, what was your first experience like? You say you seen dudes, but what was your first one that you got? Is what I'm trying. Uh, first tattoo I ever got was a. Uh... Sorry, mom. <laughs> uh, it was on my ankle. Uh -huh. I was probably 12 or 13, and I did it with a thumbtack and a big pen. Are you serious? So, broke, yeah, still got it. A little bit, of, you can barely see a line right there. Gotcha. First tattoo I ever did and got. Um, <laughs> and what about your first tattoo that you did out of the shop? Uh, first tattoo I did, uh, it was a nautical star. Mm -hmm. It was a nautical star, yeah. A okay. nautical star on somebody. Cool. Um, how did you get into tattooing? Um... I just kind of fell into it. Um, I lucked up. I uh, I actually got offered three apprenticeships before I took one, mm -hmm. um, which is probably for the best because I was young and immature and probably wouldn't have actually worked for it right. like when they first offered them to me. Um, and then finally, I was getting tattooed a lot by uh, Matt in Ink City. He used to. He's not here anymore, but he used to own it. Right. Um, and I think he thought I was just snagging stuff off the internet. Like, I used to do a lot of comic book, kind of digital artwork, so I would right. draw it, take it to him. Um, and we just got to talking about it one day, and I guess he found out I was actually drawing everything I was bringing in there, and, like, one thing led to another, and just started tattooing with him. Cool. So you actually mm -hmm. had a somewhat of an art background prior to that. You like drawing. Yeah, Not yeah. necessarily a formal art, but you like yeah, drawing. Yeah, I, I never had any real training, but, I mean, I, I always drew a lot. Um, I used to do mostly, I do like comic book art or I do like flyers for different shows like for a band I was in or a buddy's band or a CD cover or something like that. So. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And you mentioned you did Apprentice. How long was that? Um, probably not as long as it should have been. Yeah. Uh, probably six months to eight months. Yeah, I, gotcha. I, I, to me, it's like I was probably there like doing like your apprenticeship job, cleaning, sweeping, doing all that kind of stuff for like six or so months mm -hmm. and then they started letting me do like just little whatever you know tiny tattoos um i to me it's i, I felt like an apprentice for at least the first year or more really gotcha but, okay cool all right um you say you've been tattooing for 14 years so in those 14 years man um you have seen some of the changes throughout mm -hmm. the like you, one of the things you mentioned was it was easy, it was harder to get back into tattooing back then than it is mm -hmm. now so what are what are what are some of the, like, what were your views then as they are now to tattooing aside from that? Uh, like, do you have any, like, has your th thoughts on it changed? Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. Not, not, not my view on it as far as, like, what I like about it. Like, that's never really changed. Okay. Um, I appreciate more styles of tattooing now that I did when I first started. Like, when I first started, you don't know anything about traditional. You know, not really. So right. I would see it and be like, oh, man, that's so simple. Like, why didn't they do more with it? And then now I see it, it's like, oh, that's so simple. How did they do it? I, you know, it's <laughs> like, it's so impressive to right. me. Um, so I think I appreciate a lot more diversity as far as the artwork's concerned than I did when I first started. But I, I think I, I still love it. It's magic. So I, I still love it as much now as I did, you know, when I first started. So Okay. Um, what, what, what's one of the things that drives you to keep, because you said 14 years, dude, it's, 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 14 years is a while, right, regardless of what, so what keeps you, drives you to keep tattooing at the pace you do, because you're, you're consistent with your work. Yeah. Like the I, stuff I you usually, post. I don't usually stop tattooing for yeah. long. Yeah. Um, I don't, it's just fun. I don't That's know. simple, It's huh? what I, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I like doing it, I don't know, um, I'm a lucky guy. I, nine times out of ten, somebody comes in and tells me some weird idea, and I get to draw something on with a Sharpie, and have fun, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, 
I feel very fortunate that I've got to a point where a lot of people let me do that. So I don't know, just you have fun doing it. Okay, cool. Uh, what would you think the tattooing has taught you? You say tattooing has taught you anything? What Patience. Um, uh, beyond being a better artist. I mean, it's definitely like via tattooing I've learned it how to be better at just drawing, sketching, painting, like, whatever. But, I mean, other than that, definitely patience. Um, I, I, can usually, I can usually keep it cool for <laughs> a while before I get frustrated these days. Yeah, that's cool. Um, if your style of tattooing, what would you call it? And or what kind of tattoos do you um, prefer to do? I usually like doing, like, new school stuff. Um, real animated, kind of mm -hmm. cartoony looking stuff. Um, it's, it's what I've always drawn, so that's just... To me, that just kind of came natural, I guess, as opposed to trying to replicate something. Gotcha. All right. Um, do you have artists that inspire you, whether they're tattooers or non-tattooers? Yeah, I have millions of them. Um, there's a lot. The tattooer side of it's probably relatively obvious. I mean, like I like Jimmy Litwalk, I like Tony Savaro. I like all those guys that do that same stuff. Um, I like a lot of guys that do really different things than what I do. Um, I can't do the kind of work they do. Like a lot of guys do like real nice traditional. Mm -hmm. um, Justin Weatherholtz, that guy is super diverse. He, he can do anything. Um, I can't come close to doing that, but like I looking at his stuff, you know what I mean? Like kind of like, all right, it'll impress you or you'll like something about it. So I'll right. work to try to do something cool. Um, outside of tattooing, um, there's a lot of artists. A lot, a lot of like lowbrow artists, Coop, Frank Kozik, stuff like that. Gotcha, cool, cool. All right. Um, I'll, I'll veer off the written question mm -hmm. and ask you something, man. Out of, I heard your name a lot. Like I've, I've been tattooing a short time, but before I even start got got into tattooing, when I moved to the area. I heard your name over mm -hmm. and over. You know what I'm saying? And, and you come to you become one of the staples in North Alabama, at least for my thoughts. These are my own. Personal what thoughts. what drove you to stay in this area? Like, did you? Uh, mainly just family. Um, my my family lives in Coleman. Uh -huh. Um, so. I have two kids. I'm married, and I didn't, we didn't want to move really far away from family. Gotcha. Um, when I was a kid, I did. I could not wait to get out of Alabama and never come back. But now that I'm older and have a family, it just seemed easier. Not easier, but just better to stay here than to try to move off, take the kids away from everybody. Gotcha. Um, that's probably the main reason. Um, but I, I don't know. I like it here. Yeah. Alabama's all right, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, it ain't that bad, dude. I, I love it here, man. And, and it seems like you've come to find yourself. You would, even that, that we're a little secluded. I guess that's what I was trying to get at. The fact that we're a little secluded yeah. from the rest of it, and I couldn't word it right. And, but you seem to have found yourself in, in what you like doing and stuff like that. Oh, like, definitely. What, what do you think had played into that, or was it just... Uh, I think it's all just luck. I mean, or maybe not luck. I, I think, like, 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 if you... Like, if you show up on time, you're always there. Your appointment comes in. You're not four hours late. You know what I mean? You're not, like, too high to do the tattoo. You're not sitting around goofing off. They're going to come back. You know what I mean? And if you do, slowly but surely, they'll kind of start to let you have a little bit more leeway with what you're doing. You know, a little bit more freedom with the design. And then you take that same customer and you fast forward, like, eight years. And, you know, they come in and they don't even care anymore. They're just like, oh, something <laughs> cool right here. Because they're, they're, they're pretty used to what you do, I guess. So... <clears throat> so I think I think it just sort of is a natural progression that just kind of happens with time. If with time, if you're in the same area long enough. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, you got a few tattoos from artists. Um, who who's tattooed you? Who's like part of the collection you got? And is there a tattoo you like to get tattooed by? Oh. That you haven't gotten yet. Oh yeah, tons of them. Um, who knows? Uh, I may never do it just because I'm running out of room and I'm old. Um, <laughs> pretty much everybody I work with has tattooed me. Um been tattooed by Justin Weatherholtz a lot. Um, this was years ago, back when he did New School. He don't do too much of that anymore, but the Japanese is good, too. Um, I, I'd love to. I'd like to get tattooed by, uh, I really like that Frank Lenatra. I like his stuff. It, his stuff's like real storytelling, almost, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it looks like something, with, like, a lot of times a picture will just be, like, a picture of, like, a thing. And it's, but, like, his, his drawings or tattoos, both, whatever, it's always something's about to happen or something has just happened. But it's not just like a picture of an image. Does that, does that make any sense? Yeah, like, yeah, like no, no. It's like a whole it, little it's, scene. It's like, yeah, like something's going on. So I, I'd like to get tattooed by him sometime. Um, I'd like to get tattooed by like almost every other tattooer I've run into. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Um, next one is, you, you mentioned before we started the interview, you do some digital work. Aside from digital, you do any other artwork outside of tattooing? Not a lot anymore. Um, 
I'm, uh, I've done a few acrylic paintings trying to mess with it. It's never been something I picked up really easy, but I like I like doing it. Um, mostly markers. I do, I do a lot, a lot of marker drawings. Um, not as much in the past year or two, just because I've been doing more digital stuff. Right. But probably predominantly marker. Um, long time ago, I did color pencil. Um, never got the hang of watercolors. I, I tried it, tried it, tried it. Just never could pick that stuff up. I'm, I'm glad you said that, dude. Cause that makes me feel a lot more comfortable. You do watercolors, don't you, dude? We got another dude back here. He was afraid to get on camera, man. He's a he's a beast. Maybe one day we'll get his interview. Now, like most but, uh, of the guys I work with can just. Like, knock it out the yeah, park. Yeah, do like like fifty watercolor pages like a day, and they're all perfect. And like I, I can't do nothing with it. Yeah, so. I struggle with that shit too. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's good to hear <laughs> you can give me some kind of comfort, dude. But uh, all right. So, what are your characteristics of a good tattooer? Uh, somebody that likes tattooing. Um, I know a lot of people. It's always been this way. This isn't a new thing, but mm -hmm. a lot of people go to work to make money, and it's like, you, obviously, you gotta make money, right. you know. Like, but like, I do tattoos. I I charge money for tattoos so that I can keep tattooing. Like, if I just did tattoos all day for free, I wouldn't be able to tattoo anymore because I'd have right. to get a job to provide for my family. So to me, like, that's that's the distinction I sort of in my head at least that I have. It's like a good tattooer should want to tattoo. They shouldn't necessarily want to get a paycheck like you have does that make sense like you no, have no, to get the paycheck sense, you know you have to get the paycheck so that you can get to do the tattoo but right. I, I don't know to me a good tattooer wants to do a tattoo they want to be better than the last tattoo um to a point you want to give somebody what they want but you want to give them the best version of what they want um sometimes that's easier said than done but yeah. you know I, I think all that stuff can help make a good tattooer uh, what is the ideal client that you would consider to be the ideal client? Uh, somebody that knows what they want, but doesn't care how it's done, I guess. Um, I get, you get a lot of people that will come in and they're super specific. I mean, they, they know exactly down to every little detail what they want. And that's okay, but a lot of times it doesn't necessarily work. Or yeah. it's like, this idea would be cool, why don't we do this? Let's change this thing. And, you know, somebody who's so set in their ways... It can make it really hard to do something unique for them or something nice for them. Um, I like people that are sure of what they want, but pretty easy going as far as how you're going to do it or what it's going to look like or where it's going, stuff like that. Okay, cool. All right. Um, next question is, what are some of the things you'd like to see in tattooing in the near future? If, if uh, any, if there's anything you would like to see. As opposed, or uh, you mean like... Any, whether it be any improvements, any changes, just something, or some ideas you'd have that might yeah, just contribute, something. yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of room for, like, as far as, like, the mechanics of it, for mm -hmm. things to improve. Um, like, like, they got green stencil paper now. Like, like it doesn't stay on really good. It's kind of crappy yeah, for that. Yeah, it sucks, dude. Yeah, no, it's not great. About. But, like... Dude, they got some red shit, too, yeah, man. Yeah, the red, I haven't tried the red one. But, like, I was talking to the lady, uh, she used to, uh, used to own bezel books, or uh -huh. bezel books, or whatever, after you say it. But she works for Spirit now, and she was like saying that oh, they're working on making it better, and it's like, I think that's cool, like that you know, like like some of the little things like that, because like who gives a shit about stencil paper? Like like we've been sitting here all day talking about machines, nobody mentions yeah. stencil paper, but like the green stencil paper would I think be like a revolutionary change. It would be amazing, but you'll never notice it. You know what I mean? Like it's already customers are never going to notice it, but like for the tattooer, it's like holy shit, it's green instead of purple. Right. But like I think that would be a big change once they get it right. So I think it's like lots of little stuff like that, like just little things that can be improved upon that you don't think about, but once somebody figures out how to make it better, it's going to make tattooing a lot better. So not necessarily um, reinventing the wheel, but so yeah, much yeah, improving upon what we got. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, as far as like any social or artistic change in tattooing, I, I think that just happens. Like it's like, I mean, I guess you could like actively attempt to start a new trend in tattooing, but like, I don't know. Like, who the fuck are you to start a new trend pur on purpose? You know what I mean? It's like, right. to me, that's crazy. Like, like it just sort of happens, I guess. And this is giving back to tattooing. A lot of tattooers who have been tattooing uh, have made a career out of it, like such as yourself. Um, mention about giving back. And what do you think that means? Well, I guess it depends on who, who, who you're giving to. Like, if you're giving back to tattooing. Because to me, it's like tattooing... 
tattooing could mean like the person doing it or sometimes the person getting it. Mm -hmm. Like some people just want to go and get like one tattoo and that's it and they don't want another one. Or they're, for whatever reason, they're getting it but they're not getting it because they really want it. Mm -hmm. But like somebody who's getting a full body covered, you know, somebody who's really dedicated to getting a tattoo, to me is just as much a part of a tattoo or, or a tattooing as like me or somebody who's doing the tattoo. Um, so I mean, as far as like for them, I think just keep trying to do the best you can. As far as like tattooing, like the people who do tattoos, I, just help people. I don't know. Don't don't sit around trying to like keep everybody else like in the dark. I guess you know right, it's right. like like I I have not run into it as much as some people I know. But I mean, a lot of tattooers are real secretive. They don't want to tell you their tricks or whatever or show you how to do something. And like I I never really ran into that that much, but. To me that's crazy it's like if you're better i'm better like if this dude down the street is better then we're all better like right. like if something helps everyone it helps everyone and if it hurts me it hurts you if it you know if it helps them it helps me yeah. like, like i think if you look at it that way like i don't know you'll, you'll be more productive you'll get more done everybody will get along and everybody will get better so yeah dude that, that makes a lot of sense man because i know like like i had mentioned i had heard your name Mm -hmm. And I, we hadn't been introduced till we met up at Space mm -hmm. City, man. And you were so helpful. And even today, like, both of y'all were down there. Y'all were giving me advice, mm -hmm. man. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can see what you mean. Because I appreciate it. As a new tattooer, oh. I really appreciate it, man. So, thank you very much, man. So, what is tattooing to you? Oh, that's hard. Um, <laughs> other than my kids and my wife tattooing, you know, your, your, your family's always, like, the most important thing in your world. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... Other than that, tattooing is just everything. You know, I mean, it, it's what I wake up and do. I mean, almost every, like, I watch cartoons with my kids, and, like, I'll sit there and watch it, like, oh, that tree's cool. It'll be just something in the background on some crap cartoon they're watching, and, like, I'll start thinking about, I mean, I could put that in a tattoo, or I could do, you know, the way that something's drawn. Like, once you, even, like, a month, it doesn't matter how long you've been tattooing, like, if it gets in your brain, that's all you think about. And, like, everywhere you look, you're like, oh, that's That'd be a cool texture to put on something or whatever, you know? It's like, like that's all, that's all you think about. So, I mean, it, it just takes over everything, I guess. Yeah, it becomes an obsession, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah, we had a silent, yeah. And he didn't want to get on camera, man. He's too pretty. Yeah, he's too pretty. His Instagram, B-I-G famous, 25K instantly. What does it say? Um, I'm just messing with you, dude. Seriously, man, we got to get you to do one of these, man. One of these days. One day. One day. All right. Um... The, the, the general thing, like, um, is there a favorite tattoo you've done before? You do some crazy stuff, man. Like, pretty uh, pretty out there and, and, and not in a bad way. Like, yeah, you, yeah. it's pretty animated. Like, just, you do some cool shit. I, I like everything for, like, a week. Like, 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 whatever the last one I did, it was something I really got to, like, I mean, I, I like tattoos if I, a lot of times, I mean, I still do stuff where somebody brings it in or something where it's not really my style, but they really want some certain type of thing. You know, I'll do that tattoo on them. Um... Yeah. And I like those too, but as far as the favorite ones that I've done, usually whatever the last one I did is my favorite one until the week goes by and then I hate it, and then the next one I do will be my favorite one. Okay. Do you have an approach to tattooing mentally or any kind of philosophy? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I, I know a lot of people talk about how tattooing is zen, or you know, you just kind of like get kind of into it or something and everything. I, I, I don't think I do. I, I honestly, I've always thought of myself as an illustrator and less of an artist. To me, like, if you're an artist, you're painting or drawing or tattooing or whatever, and there's, like, a lot of feeling. Like, it means something. There's emotion mm -hmm. there. And, like, I've never, never thought of myself that way. Like, okay. I draw, like, illustrate. You know, it's like I draw a picture of a thing doing something with something next to it as opposed to, like, trying to come up with, like, a picture that means love or a picture that means something. Like, I, I've always leaned more just toward, like, a very literal drawing kind of mentality cool cool so like what, what we mentioned you're pretty uh you, your work is pretty in demand man you you, you, don't, you put in your work you build your skill up man so you're, you're highly sought for how do you stay grounded and how do you balance that out oh because like, you mentioned you have a family yeah you have a family um, you have a business seems you got quite a few artists under you the finally like, like there for a while i was working like seven days a week and that was rough that's rough on your family that's rough on everybody um the past year, I've gotten way better at it, but I just try to make sure I'm not constantly working late. You know, I try to kind of space out the appointments a little bit more, have like one or two a day instead of trying to do like four or five things every day. Um, 
try to make sure I get out on time, try to make sure I get to spend as much time as possible with my family. You definitely, I think when you tattoo, when you own any business, I mean, even if you're like at tattoo or working at a shop, you're still your, it's your own business because it's your art. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not like you work at this shop so you do the t tattoos that the whole shop does. You know, it's like right, everybody right. does their own thing. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's hard to, you have to kind of like, work really hard to balance everything out I, I just try to make sure i've got the time off to be there and do whatever we're doing together as a family yeah. all right greg well is there anything you got coming up that maybe you'd like to tell the public you know like any shows anything like that and any schedule or how to go how do they go about contacting you well you can contact me uh you can go to the blue rose tattoo.com um and that'll have like pictures of everybody's stuff has our phone number email everything like that um you can find me on Instagram. It's just at gross9978. Um, the next convention I'm doing is not until August, so I, nobody will remember. They'll, they'll forget by then. Um, <laughs> All right, dude. All right, one last question. Um, the whole purpose, and, and being that it's coming from you, this actually probably going to be the most meaningful interview I get to do, dude, is because the whole purpose I started these interviews was to try to generate, oh, I'm sorry, try to educate the general public. Mm -hmm. And try, because, like I said, we're a little secluded, so some of the things that, public knowledge on tattooing isn't as advanced as other places so mm -hmm. if you were to give the general public advice as to how to seek the proper artist for them what would it be uh, look at portfolios um, the, the thing I've run into more times than not like if somebody comes into a shop and they they don't care they don't care who does it doesn't matter it's not necessarily like that's a bad thing you know I mean they, they may just know like, oh, I've heard everyone here is good. And it's like, that that's a compliment to us. We, we get that a lot at our shop where somebody will come in and it's like, well, who do you want to get tattooed by? We always start there. And a lot of times people are like, I don't care. Everybody here is good. And it's like, well, that, that's awesome. You know, that makes right. everybody feel good. But it's like, it's not good enough to be like, oh, everybody's good. It's like, I'm good at this. He's good at that. She's good at this. Everybody's good at a different thing. And I think being a good tattooer today isn't necessarily enough anymore. Like, like, cause like there's so many good tattooers, you want to find a tattooer that's good at what you want. Gotcha. Um, you know, it's like, you don't go buy like a little Toyota to like haul around farm equipment, you know, or you don't go <laughs> buy, it's like, it's a good car. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not going to suit what you need it for. So it's like, you want to make sure that whoever you're getting tattooed by, what they, what they do is going to match what you expect, I guess. Um, I think that's probably, that, that would be my number one suggestion. Um, beyond the obvious stuff, you know, make sure it's clean, make sure it's not like in Cousin Jimmy's basement. You know, like that stuff's right. all, I, I think should be obvious at this point. Um, You'd be surprised it really ain't those. Probably it, not. No. Yeah, that's, that's the sad part. <laughs> it probably ain't. Yeah. Yeah, so. All right, then anything else you want to add to it? I would guess. That's pretty much. All right, then. All right, thank you very much, yeah. Greg. Thanks for taking the time, man.